Good morning, Cappuccino. Welcome to the last day of school before spring break. Um, today, all we're going to do is have a warm-up. And again, first you know, five or six people who turn in the correct answer to this warm-up will get extra credit. Um, so here's your warm-up. I also want to go over yesterday's warm-up. And during our uh, Google Hangouts meeting yesterday, there, a question came up from this assignment, number 79, how to do problems CI and CII. So I want to go over how to do those problems. Um, it was really tough for us to try and figure it out. I didn't know how to do it. And so we figured it out together and we got the answer, but we didn't quite understand why we got the answer right. So um, I did a little more research and now I think I'm better able to explain it. So I'm going to go over this problem. Um, and then hopefully you'll be able to figure out the other one. Okay, so back to yesterday's warm-up. So here was yesterday's warm-up. A random variable x is distributed normally with a mean of 372 and a standard deviation of 13. So the first thing that we want to do here is make a sketch. Okay, so making a sketch is nice. It helps keep you grounded in what this could possibly mean. So if I make a sketch of this situation, I'm going to make my normal curve. So start with my x-axis, make a bell-shaped curve. And the mean right in the middle is going to be 372. And then they tell us the standard devi deviation is 13. So that comes like around here, whatever, same distance on both sides. And they said that was 13. So if I add 13 to 372, 372 plus 13 gives me 385. And then if I subtract 13 from 372, I get 359. Okay. So I want to know what's the probability um, of the event that is less than 381, that it's going to be less than 381. So if I choose randomly, I want to know what's the chance that I'll choose something that's less than 381. So 381 would be in between these two um, numbers right here. So maybe maybe around here. And I want less than or equal to that, so that would be all of this. So this is the area, and the area is the same as the probability. So now we're ready to use our calculator. So I'm going to put this into my calculator. So I, um, I'm not going to do the inverse. We've been practicing inverse, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do just a normal distribution, so option number two. My lower limit, see it goes forever to the left, so I want a really big negative number. This is how you type a really big negative number. It's negative 1E99. So you can do that, or you can just put in like negative a million is fine. It works. You'll get the same answer rounded off to three sig figs. It'll turn out the same. Okay, the upper limit is going to be that 381. My mean is 372, and my standard deviation is 13. Hit enter a bunch of times, and we get our answer. The probability here, the probability that we will choose 381 or less is equal to 0 0.756, or 75.6%. All right. Now, next question. We're still dealing with the same random variable. And this time, though, we know the probability, but we don't know the, um, the value on the x-axis. So... I am going to draw my normal curve again. So give me a bell-shaped curve. The mean, again, is 372. The standard deviation is still the same, so 385. And this side, 359. So notice it's just a real quick and dirty curve, you know, sketch. Okay, I'm not counting anything here. Um, I want the probability of an event greater than some value is 0 0.17. So that means I'm going to be shading to the right. So I'm only going to be shading 17% of this curve. Well, 17% of this curve, well, that's going to be up here somewhere. So um, I'm going to put it, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly where it's going to be. Actually, if we think about our normal curve distribution, I just wanted to come back to that. Um, where's my... There's my normal curve. Actually, we can get a pretty good idea of where the 17% is going to be, because if you look at this, 
just at this real generic one, 16% is in the second and third quartile. So if I want 17%, I'm actually probably going to be to the left of that first standard deviation. So it's actually probably 17% is probably going to be real close to this guy, um, probably somewhere over here. It's probably going to be really close to that. Um, because if you think about this, if this one was 75.6%, that means this is 25%. So 17% is probably going to be a little closer to that 385. All right. And then I want this area over here because I want to be greater than that. So now here's where we run into a problem with our calculator. We can't put in greater than um, situations when we're doing the inverse normal curve distribution. We have to rewrite this as the probability of x is less than t. So what's that going to be? Well, that's going to be the complement of 0 0.17. So the complement, 1 minus 0 0.17, we need the complement. That would be 0 0.83. 1 minus 0 0.17 is 0.83. So this is what I'm going to use in my calculator, because the calculator is always going to do it from the left-hand side. It can't give me areas on the right-hand side of that dividing line, but it will still get me the dividing line. So here we go, back to our graphing calculator. This time I'm going to do the inverse function, and my area is 0.83, and my mean is 372, and my standard deviation is 13, and hit enter a bunch of times, and I get 384. Look at that, t is equal to 384. And so it was actually super close to that 385, which makes sense because 17%, if I looked at my, my notes on my percentages on my normal curve, okay, we have that in here too, right? We have our, our normal curve. If we look on here, 17%. If I have 13.6 plus 2.1, that's 15, 16%. If it was going to be really close to the first standard deviation. So it actually, it really makes sense that that's where it would be. And there it is. So that was yesterday's warm-up. Okay, here's today's warm-up. And I want to go over from, where is it again? This assignment, I want to go over problem 1C. I, 1CI. This one was very tricky. I had to do some research, in fact, to figure out how to do it. Okay, so um, we had a problem like this before, and the thing that we did is we actually solved the absolute value, and that helped us find the answer before. So that was my first instinct was, well, let's solve this absolute value, but then I got stuck. I didn't really understand what it meant. So um, I had to do some deep thinking about it. So if I solve this absolute value, so if I have the absolute value of x is less than x, um, I can solve it by writing two inequalities. x is less than x, um, or we can write x is greater than negative x. Now, if we think about graphing that on a number line, if I put that on a number line, I am going to have x and I'm going to have negative x. So negative x would be on this side and positive x would be on this side, assuming that you know, the original x is a positive number. And, um, and then if I want my, my, um, my event, my random variable, is less than x, that's going to be going this way. But I also want my random variable to be greater than negative x, well, that's going this way. So notice that is going to be the numbers in between negative x and x. So if I'm taking the absolute value of my random variable is less than x, then it can be greater than negative x or it can be less than x. So we do that, get that just by solving our, our equation here. One thing that might help, I think, is if we actually make this like a different letter. Like say we called it... Um, R <laughs> for a random variable. If we change that to an R, then it thinks it's kind of a little bit less confusing um, as to what are all these X's? Why are there big X's and little X's? So if we change that to R for random variable, so R can be less than X or R can be greater than negative X. So my R could be in here. 
All right, so now let's think about this in terms of the normal curve distribution. So if I have my normal distribution, get myself a nice bell-shaped curve here, and I put on my mean. Well, the thing that's very convenient about this problem is that the mean is zero. That is very convenient because um, if it wasn't, then we wouldn't really know where to put these x values. So given that the mean is zero, x is going to be one side of it, and negative x is going to be the same distance on this side of it. And then we know that we are interested in the region in between these. So what is the probability that I'm going to be between these two numbers? It's going to be this area right here. The probability that I am going to fall between these two numbers is going to be right here. So when we were talking about this at our Google Hangout yesterday, I was trying to put it in context. And when we use absolute value, we're usually talking about distance. And it kind of reminded me of the coronavirus, that you want to be at least six feet away from somebody. So, and it doesn't matter if it's to the left or if it's to the right. You need to be six feet away. So um, that's kind of what I was thinking about. So this would be the no-go zone for the coronavirus. So you cannot be within six feet. Okay, so what's the probability that you're going to be within six feet? And it doesn't matter if it's to the right or to the left. So I th I'm pretty sure these absolute values, you would use this if you're talking about distance, um, because it doesn't matter in which direction that distance is. Okay, so now how do we solve this? Now that we have a visual idea of this, I know that this area is 0 0.5. Okay, our probability equals 0 0.5. So this area is 0 0.5. But if I'm going to do my inverse probability, like I said on the warm-up, I have to rewrite this with a, um, a less than. I have to find the probability of x is less than some number. So in other words, if I am doing this problem and trying to put it into the calculator, the calculator wants me to put in, oh, this pen's not working. It wants me to put in this. How do we write this? So the, I can find this line. Um, on my calculator, okay? So, and then this line is the same as this line, because, it, but just the opposite sign. So if I can find this, then I'll be able to find my x, okay? So the probability that, f, oh, I'm sorry, I changed it to an r. <laughs> the probability that r is less than negative x is equal to, well, what's this area? Okay, now this is where symmetry comes in. First of all, we know the entire normal curve is equal to 1. Um, and then we are cutting it in half. We're cutting it in half. So I know this part is 0 0.5 all by itself. And the shaded part is 0 0.5. But since we cut it in half, that means this part is 0 0.25. And this side is 0 0.25. So if this, is, this whole part is 1 half and this is 0 0.25, then this is also going to be 0 0.25. So this is going to be 0 0.25, okay? Because I took my shaded area, it's, half of it is on one side of the mean and half is on the other side, so I can cut that 0 0.5 in half. And then, because the normal curve is symmetrical, I know half of the area is on the left of a normal curve. So if I already have 0 0.25, I can do... 0 0.5 minus 0 0.25 to get the remainder, okay? So it just, it's just coincidence that these happen to be the same. On the next problem, on um, this one, you're going to um, cut this in half, which would be 0 0.4, and then subtract that from 0 0.5. So you're not going to get another 0 0.4, okay? So if you make this diagram, and think about the symmetry of the situation, you'll be able to figure out what is the probability of this piece down here. So this piece down here is 0 0.25, and now I can solve this using my calculator. So I'm going to use my inverse function. So second bars, inverse, and my area is 0 0.25. My, my mean is 0. My standard deviation is the square root of 12, okay, remember they gave us, they gave us that, okay, up here they gave us variance, which is 12, so the standard deviation is square root of 12, and then hit enter a bunch of times, and I get negative 2.34. So, if you looked at the answers that I gave you, 
it said it was positive 2.34. But notice we were solving for negative x. So negative x is equal to negative 2.34. So therefore, positive x is equal to 2.34. Okay, so the trick on this with the absolute values is solve it, set it up as two inequalities, graph that, see what it looks like, and then transfer that to your normal curve so that you can fill in your, your areas. And then from there, um, it makes it a lot easier to figure out what needs to actually go into the calculator. All right, so today, all you have to do that's new is the warm-up, finish any outstanding assignments. If you have any questions, feel free to send them. Um, next week, I'm going to be planning our lessons for after spring break. So we're pretty much, I think we're pretty much done with normal and binomial distribution. I was going to do Poisson distribution, but I might hold off on that until next year because I really want to review calculus for all my seniors because I've noticed very few seniors have been showing up for my um, Zoom meetings or Google Hangout meetings. So I want to get back to something that's really going to be useful for my seniors, especially all my seniors who are going off to study engineering. You're all going to have to take calculus your freshman year. So let's go and review calculus. And for my HL students for next year, the calculus that we're going to be reviewing is things that are part of the HL curriculum. So we're going to be learning some new calculus stuff that's going to be really helpful for everybody who's going to be majoring in engineering in college and everybody who's going to be going to HL next year. And for those of you who aren't doing either of those things, well, it'll just make you a little bit smarter. That can't hurt. All right. Have a great spring break. Any questions, just send me an email. Bye-bye.